Hello everyone, today we are going to cover a deeper dive in the reinforced concrete design module. I know that I should be starting my stru seal structure series very soon, but I'm still preparing it so I don't want to leave this week without a video about this robot. So I wanted to answer one question from our subscribers that talk about uh, multiple options in beam design module, so let's dive into it. Uh, of course, uh, please subscribe to the channel and share and comment and like. This helps a lot this channel in its growth. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Of course, I'm going to go to my 2D frame design because I want to implement a simple beam. My point today is not modeling the beam itself. There are multiple videos about modeling beams, but rather to design the beam. So I will assume you a simple beam that has a span of 5 meters, the first span, 4 meters, the second span, and 5 meters as the third span. And here I will go to zero, I'll apply that and close. I'm in the 2D frame design, by the way. So I select me a beam, it's a reinforced concrete beam. This section is 300 by 450. You could, for example, change it to 300 by 500, which is something I will do right now. So I select my reinforced concrete beam, select the browse button to define my section and define me a 300 by 500 millimeter section, because why not? So 300 and 500, I'll add that, close and basically start drawing. So I'll select this, drag, and click from here to here to here. For those of you who are interested, yes, you could have changed the moment of inertia and have reduced it, but it doesn't matter because there is no beam connection, there is no column connection, so the inertias don't matter in this case, in the structure analysis of this problem. But you can do it if you want. Anyway, I have drawn my beam, I will pin it everywhere, and let's dive into the design of that thing. So let's pin this, I'll apply that, and now let's assume some loads. Let's assume that this beam is in a structure and the spacing of those beams are 6 meters each. That means that the center to center spacing of those beams is 3 from the right, 3 from the left. So the spacing is 6 meters. Why do I say this? Because I'm going to try to predict the loads on this beam. So I'll go to my dead load now. I'll assume my dead load was one kilo, 10 kilonewton per meter square. Multiplied by 6 will give you a 60 kilonewton per meter square. This is a little bit heavy, but why not? Let's just do it. I'll apply on all, or just click one by one. You can click one by one, or you can just write here all and, and, and enter key. I go to live load, I'll assume my live load of 0.4, multiplied by six, because the 0.4 is an area load, multiplied by six, this is 24, I guess. No, it's 2.4. I had a small error. My level is 4 kilonewtons per meter square, so 24, I'll apply that to everyone, and close. And you could, you could assume a combination, I don't want to do that because I'll let Robert do it for me. So I run the analysis now, nothing new, this should be boring. And this tools, results, diagrams from members, just to check. Moment Y should be a continuous moment diagram, it seems to make sense. Oh look, moment doesn't dip down, it happens when you have long spans on both sides. So that makes sense to me. This checks out. Deflection shape. Yeah, this goes up because the spans are too, the loads are too heavy on both spans here. So this one goes up. Okay, everything seems to be fine. So what about case of loading? There is a video about case of loading where you should variate your live load on all spans. Luckily for us, robot does that. I will show you proof for this. So I'll select my beam and I'll go to design and design my beam. If I click on that, Robot will take my beam and take four foundations because you have four supports. Of course, I'm not interested in the foundation, just warning you that this is what will happen. So I click on re provide reinforcement and take a look. The required reinforcement has a video that is linked above, but for the provide reinforcement, there is a lot of options that you should take into consideration. All right, fantastic. So now it asks me, what do I want to import? Do I want to import simple cases or manual combinations? I don't have manual combinations, so I will import simple cases. An amazing insight from our dear subscriber was about the supports. Uh, this was relevant in the slab series when we had ribbed slab, and you can actually select sometimes which nodes are supporting, which nodes are not supporting. Why would you do that? You would do that because if you have a beam running on top of another beam in robot, then robot will think that the beam supports the other beam. This doesn't always happen because sometimes you know that your secondary beam is supported by your main beam. Robot doesn't know the difference between them, so you have to manually tell them which beam supports which. You cannot have both beams supporting both themselves. 
So I'll just leave everything here because I have pins. I say OK. OK, so I think the importing has been done. If you go to a level here, you see foundations and you see beam. I only want the beam, so I double click on the beam. My robot has a strange GUI where I have to make this smaller and take this by hand, put it here. Tell me in the comment if you have the same problem. I seem to have this problem myself. Anyway, I'll just show you what we have here. This now is the design module of reinforced concrete beams. There is a video about this. I will link it in the comment. I will link it above on the right. But of course, that video was a shorter video. This is going to be a more detailed one. So if you have a beam that is basically taken from the analysis module, you will notice something very strange. The columns have zero thickness. Why? Because uh, we're in the, in the geometry. I mean, if you click here, select start and go through geometry. You can see that those are pins and pins are knife edge supports. You can change that here, but I don't want to change that here. I want to change that in the design module. So I select reinforced concrete design. Go back to provided reinforcement. Okay, so going on with this, double click on beam. And now I have my beam back. So those knife edges are incorrect. Allow me to show you what happens if we just run the analysis blindly. If you run the analysis blindly, robots should freak out and tell you I cannot distribute reinforcement. You see, detailing condition, problems with reinforcement arrangement. Doesn't work because, I mean, what is this knife's edge thing? If you do beam reinforcement, you will see a robot not even knowing how to do anything. And it seems to be very, very odd. You don't have any reinforcement. Once again, I am still fighting this bug, so I need to make this smaller and take it down here. And then focus again. You see, there is no reinforcement at all here. It doesn't work because robot is unable to design your reinforcement. Why is it unable to do that? Because, my dear, my dear viewer, you don't have any width for the column, and the column is needed for anchorage lengths. So this doesn't, this doesn't work. How can you modify the columns? <clears throat> well, uh, first of all, if you select a beam from your structure and you have real columns there, like in the video that I have done before, then the columns will automatically be imported. But if you have pins, then the columns will not be imported because you don't have any information about the pin size. So how can you do that? Well, you select the span and you go to span geometry. In span geometry, you can see the support conditions of your span, and you can see the width of the support. Now, for the purposes of this video, I will assume my support width to be 450 millimeters. Now, notice a strange thing. If you hit enter now, the robot will explode, because look at the unit. It's in meters. If I say 450 millimeters, this means it's as large as a lot of football courts, which is impossible. So I'll put 0.45 meters here, and 0.45 meters here, and hit apply. If you do that, lo and behold, you have support widths. Also, lo and behold, the five meters got smaller. The five meters got smaller by half by the width of the support because five meters minus half 45 and half 45 gives you 4.55. This is a really neat and cool addition to the point. Now, there is something called advanced here. In this case, you can talk about supporting offset and how you can anchorage the, the steel in the support. Usually, the anchorage of the steel in the support goes up because it wants to stop the cracking, but if for some reason you are anchoring it down, be my guest, you can select it here. I will not do that, so I'll leave it. There is also offset of the support off center from the beam, but I will not do that. I will consider my supports to be collinear with the beam. All right, now my support are concrete. There is no masonry here. The idea of concrete has effects on the anchorage length and so on of the structure because you cannot just put a steel inside masonry. All right, did we finish? No, there is another support here, so we need to do that. Similarly, I have 0 0.45 here, 0 0.45 here. I'll apply that, and everything seems to be fine. Now I can make a blind analysis, but before I do that, there is something called segments. If you click on segments, you can actually define the starting coordinates and the ending coordinates of your structure in the z-axis. Why would you do that? You would do that if you have, for example, a staircase. I run a blind analysis now. Of course, here there is a problem in the bending moment. It's not sufficient. I'll talk about this in a moment. And the flexion doesn't work. Okay, fine. We will talk about the error later. But let's take a look on the reinforcement just to see something. The reinforcement has been done. It has been reinforced. But robot tells you that the reinforcement is not enough. Okay, fine. Thank you very much for this information. We will see how we can fix this in a moment. 
So, okay, fine, let's take a look on the arrows and what they mean. Now, if you go to beam note, you will see glaring red colors for all the arrows. So let's take a look. It tells you it's not okay and it tells you why it's not okay. That is something about deflection, something about uh, capacity. So if you scroll down to the capacity calculations, you take a look and see, whoa, take a look, the capacity here is being over uh, overdone. Like you can see that the capacity is not sufficient in span number two. This is span number two and it's not sufficient in both times here. There are two elements where the capacity of the bending and the capacity of the shear is not sufficient. Okay, let's keep this into consideration because we need to fix that. Uh, if you go to deflection, um, let's take a look. This is the quiet reinforcement. Fine. We are just looking for deflection now. There we go. Oh, sorry. I spoke too much. There we go. Deflections. Now, those red, those two red lines here are the deflection limits. You have a deflection limit in the positive and deflection limit in the negative. There is one line that goes below this deflection limit, which means you are overtaking your deflection. And it's, of course, the long-term deflection that will make a problem because the long-term deflection is what usually makes problems. The short-term deflection was perfectly fine. The long-term deflection made errors. So I have problem with deflection and I have problem with reinforcement. Okay, going back to my beam diagrams, just to double check that again, we can see here very clearly in the moment that if you reach near the support, you can see that the moment required is 195 and the moment resistor or even 199 and the resistant, the red one, is 194. So I'm messing things up here. That's not all because there is also shear and in the shear it told me that there is an error here, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a very slight problem, but I think there is a problem in shear here. Let me see. Yeah, I think. Not really sure if there's an error. I cannot find it. I'll just take Robert for face value here. If you go to your displacement, you can once again see that the displacement... Oh, there is no displacement. Why? Because we are in the ULS. If you go to deflection, then you see the deflection envelopes. And you can see, of course, in this case, the deflection limit was 20.83. This is the admissible deflection. And uh, deflection happened here more than 20.83. So, well, this is the error. Okay, I know why my errors are. How can I solve those errors? Multiple possibilities. Possibility number one is, well, you increase the beam size. And possibility number two is to play with the calculation options here. So let's take a look. Notice I just ran a very random calculation. But now we need to go into the meat of this thing. So first of all, I have my story parameters. As misleading as the name sounds, it calls itself story parameters but there is something very important in the story parameters. The important thing that you see in the story parameters is the sustained load action for five months. This is for your long-term deflection calculations, and there are five months here. Of course, each code has its own load sustained load action for, so you should check out your code and basically apply the correct load action. For the environmental class, I don't have any fire resistance for this one, so I'll leave it as it is. There is no time for fire resistance, and in environmental class is F0, because I'm not interested in this. Going to this one, this is where things get interesting. The cover, of course, is 30 millimeters here assumed, and it's calculated from the transversal reinforcement or the stirrups. Some of you use 25 millimeters here, some of you use 400 millimeters here. It depends on the code and on the exposure. I will leave it 30 millimeters as is. Of course, feel free to change it, if your code dictates that. I'm trying to be as code neutral as possible until I have to uh, just leave it. Now there's something called correction bind, reinforcement change and geometry change. So the first thing I will try out is I click correction by reinforcement change. I'll hit OK and run the analysis again and take a look what happens. And lo and behold, it's still not working. Uh, it tries, it tries to solve the problem of deflection because look, let me show you. What is this reinforcement change? Deflection calculations, if the deflection is not enough, if the deflection is too much, you can correct the deflection by changing the reinforcement. And this is what happened. So now, the governing condition for the reinforcement design is both um, deflection and moment capacity. 
And it, you can see that it tried and it seems it uh, succeeded in fixing the deflection. If you go to beam diagrams and select deflection to see, you can see that deflection is now within limits. But of course, at what cost? It applies, I don't know, mammoth-like uh, steel bars, which is absolutely nonsensical in this case. Now, if you go back and run the analysis again, there were a lot of errors in terms of capacity. This is 100% true because, I mean, take a look. The, I mean, you should even, I mean, even if it tells you everything is fine, you should not just take it with a straight face because, I mean, take a look at this bar. So, deflection correction by uh, reinforcement change might work and might not work. Okay. Now, notice that there are some deflection limits. You can override the deflection limit of the code by applying your own deflection limit. And I want to show you. If you click deflection and say, for example, 5 millimeters here, which is absurd, and hit OK, and run the analysis again, of course, your deflection now is once again being warned against. Uh, but this time, of course, if you go to your diagrams, you can see that the limiting factor is totally different now. And the limiting factor is... Uh, not even shown. Oh. It's not shown, but at least you can see in the table, uh, I'll, let my, I'll let the editor put a line here. You can see in the table there is five millimeters, but it's not shown here because it seems the robot doesn't know how to deal with this. It seems. I don't know. I'll have to check out why this happens. I think it's a bug. Never mind. I'll just show you. I'll let, I'll let the editor show you with an arrow where the deflection limit is. Anyway, uh, yeah, so you can override the deflection limit from the code and apply your own deflection limit. I mean, which is an idea that you can use, but I will not take it into consideration. Of course, you can limit this by L over, which is a span ratio, but I will not do this. I will let him always select from the code what the deflection limit is. Now, there is something called minimum load capacity relative. Now, of course, what does this mean? Let's run the analysis to show you what it means. Here, the safety factor is 0.99, meaning that you are 99%, that your strength is 99% of, uh, of your applied moment. So the moment strength of the section is 99% of the applied moment, meaning that you are only short by 1%. Why is that? Why is he comparing with 1? He is comparing with 1 because all design codes use the equation where... Uh, phi mn should be more than mu. You can, for example, call it 1.1 to be a little bit more on the safe side. Let's run the analysis with 1.1, something that makes sense. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, now it makes sense. Great, now it makes sense, cool. So what happened here? I just put here a 1.1, so now Autodesk Robot is not satisfied when you have capacity of 1. What do I mean by this? Phi mn should be more, should be more or equal MU, which means that phi MN over MU should be more or equal 1. That's what it means. And this one is what the code wants from you. You can override it to select, for example, 1.1, which makes your beam, which, which makes your standard photo design a little bit higher. You increase the safety factor by 0.1. And this is what I have done here by saying 1.1. Now, if you do 1.1 here and run the analysis, you will see that robot now has more errors than before. For example, the capacity in bending for some spans is no longer sufficient because you have a capacity of 1.06, but you're asking for a standard of 1.1. 1.06 is not sufficient for 1.1, so it doesn't make any sense. And it tells you, hey, you are not sufficient and you need to, you need to basically uh, fix this issue. So you are raising the standard of the bar for the factor of safety by an artificial margin of 0.1. Why would you do that? Because maybe, and there is a reason for that, by the way, because maybe you are in the preliminary design stage and you want to be a little bit more on the safe side because things will change. And when things change, you don't want to redesign your entire structure. So maybe that's the reason why you're doing this. I'll keep it one and just run the analysis again to get my old errors. I still haven't solved them, by the way. Okay, great. So everything seems to be fine so far. I mean, by fine, everything seems to be in order. Now we go back to our condition here, and let's take a look. What is geometry optimization? I will come to that in the end. This is where you can let robot change your geometry. I will come to that today, but in the end of this video.
first of all, I need to solve the problem. If you go to concrete, I haven't selected my concrete yet, so I'll just select, I'll just leave it by 24 megapascals, or you can just select something larger, like 31 megapascals or 30. Those concretes are based on the American database. You have your own EU database, for example, where you can select your own materials. How do you change your database? Check out job preferences and preferences video I've linked above. But just to say that very quickly, you go to preferences, job preferences, you go to materials and select your database from American to something you want here. I don't want that, so let's get back to our point here. Um, I am selecting concrete to be a little bit stronger, just saying. So I'm so the aggregate size is important because it's important for your rebar or reinforcement bar spacing. I don't have lightweight concrete and the aggregate type I'll leave it as silicon. So I will not change anything here. If you go to longitudinal reinforcement, it uses the grade 420 rebars. You have those numbers which correspond to the uh, metric system, 10 millimeters, 30 millimeters, and so on with their areas. That's perfect. Nothing that you need to change here. Transversal reinforcement are the same. He's using grade 300, which is peculiar. I think I will go to 420 because usually I will buy one grade steel in the entire. Look, this is a practical. This is a practical point here. Why do I choose 420 for the transversal and the longitudinal? It depends on your workforce. If you have really highly skilled workforce and you know that they will not be confused, then you can use two grade steel. But I'm afraid that when I buy the steel and it gets shipped into the construction site, that my skilled workers would confuse the two grades together and I will end up having setups of 420 megapascal and main reinforcement of 300. So I would be on the safe side and choose 420 for both. Additional reinforcement is anything else that is not used in the load calculation. So for the additional reinforcement, I will choose 420 and leave it as it is and hit OK. Running the analysis again, nothing should change. I should, I should still have some errors, which is kind of bugging me. I know, I know. Okay, so we finished everything that is here with exception to a geometry change. Let's talk about this right now. So what is geometry optimization? Geometry optimization is robot trying multiple different H's and B's to find the best possible beam. Now, if you fix both, nothing will happen with regard to optimization. It will keep them same, nothing is happening. If you unclick H or B, it will start iterating through one of them or both of them. For example, if you keep H fixed and change B, this means that now the height of the beam will be constant and the width of the B will be changed. Of course, now you can give it a minimum value and a maximum value and can, it can iterate between them or you can leave it open-ended. Now, what's the criteria of optimization? What is your target? For example, your target could be to achieve a reinforcement ratio of 1%. Your target could be to achieve a steel weight by uh, cubic meter of so and so. Those are good values based on your current economic situation. Like what is optimization? Now, of course, uh, there is research about design optimization, but this is a little bit simpler. So if you keep this now, robot, for example, steel with 100 kilograms, robot will now start playing with the width of the beam by changing it every, it will start by 100 millimeter and change it every 50 millimeters until it achieves what you want, if it's possible. Of course, here you should keep identical height of span sections and width of span sections because of reinforcing uh, ideas. I mean, look, if you change the width of the spans, if the spans start having different widths and different heights, you will run into some complications when you do the detailing. Okay, so let's go back to this and check out the geometry uh, optimization. And I will choose B to be changing, and I will see, select a steel weight of 100 kilograms and run the analysis. Now, things will get a little bit longer now because it will cycle through all possible Bs. Before I do that, I need to remember what the initial B was because I will put it back to its initial B after I finish. So going back to beam view, I'll just check out what my initial B was. Uh, the initial B was 550? No, it's 300, right? Why did it become 550? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It became 550 because I asked him geometry change here. I have asked him to do this before. So, okay, let me just fix that very quickly. changed because we previously asked it to uh, fix the deflection by changing the geometry. So it did that, but of course I forgot to bring it back to its original geometry. 
All right, so now we're going to go to geometry optimization and, well, fingers crossed, take a look what happens now. If you run the analysis now blindly, maybe it will work. I'm not really sure. It didn't work perfectly. Okay, we are getting closer to this. It didn't work perfectly, but it seems that it changed some geometry and was better in terms of environmental conditions. Let's take a look at the new geometry. It's selecting 550 by 500. Odd, why it's always selecting that. Okay, now we continue and now we will open the floodgates here. I will let him change everything. Change the height, change the B, and change everything. Now, if you allow him to change everything, you can actually fix the height to width ratio. So I just say, okay, and run the analysis again and take a look. This time, a lot of problems have disappeared. And, well, it, take, it took me a 500 by 5600. Uh, that's odd. I think I told him H over B should be. He didn't do that. It seems he was unable to do that. I guess. Okay, fine. That's a thing. So, you see, when you ask him for geometry optimization, he tries to find the best geometry that gives you the best results. Still, we're not there yet. Still, if you're on the analysis, we are not there yet because, take a look, we are still unsafe. So, it seems that it's unable to find the correct geometry for that, which is kind of strange. So, let's continue with our options to take a look why we have this strange issue. So, let's just do this very quickly. Let me fix that back. So this is what geometry change does. It changes the geometry to try to give you the best result based on the criteria you give it here. So that's an, another question that was asked, and now we have it. Now I'll get it back to fixed because I don't want any geometry change. So if you run the analysis now, it should get back to your errors in deflection and in capacity. Indeed, we have those errors. Fine, perfect. So going on with this, let's get into reinforcement pattern. And this is where things get really spicy. If you click reinforcement pattern, you are greeted with this abomination of options. And this is almost an option over overflow. So let's take a look on those options. First things first. The preferred bar spacing between bars has a spacing of minimum 100 and maximum 150 millimeters. And for longitudinal reinforcement for torsion has 100 millimeters. Who decides this? Uh, the decision of maximum and minimum is basically an arbitrary decision in robots, but there are some con concepts in the code that allow you for controlling the minimum and maximum spacing. So this is basically the preferred bar spacing between those uh, longitudinal main bars. And uh, tied all means that, yes, it will tie all the bars. Automatic means it will tie them based on what the code requires from you. This has a meaning in reinforced concrete columns because in reinforced concrete columns based on the ASI code, you don't need to tie all the columns. If you select auto, it will not tie all the layers. The length of the diameter, or the length of the bar is important for cutoff bars uh, because if you have 12 meters, it means that your beam is longer than 12 meters, which means you need cutoff bar. Allow me to explain. Look, if you select this bar, you can see this is one piece and this is another piece. Why did he piece his bars like this? Because he cannot basically uh, take them as one full length from the start to end. If you say 50 meters, then maybe, maybe, if robot thinks this is economical, maybe it will extend the bar from start to finish. It depends, of course, on what robot deems to be uh, economical. Let's try that. I'm not really sure if it works or not, because sometimes robot just thinks that it's uneconomical. I'll put here 20 meters and say, okay, and run the analysis now and take a look on the bars. So see, okay, Robert deemed it unnecessary. Okay, so the reason why those bars are actually not entirely on the entire length, although I provided 20 meters of length for bars, is because basically the selection of the reinforcement segment was via a single span. Now, if you select a whole beam, then it will provide 20 meters of reinforcement if it is able, or basically use some cutoff if it is unable. Now, if I click OK now and run the analysis again and take a look, you will see that, for example, the const first of all, the errors are still there, but you will see now that, for example, the construction reinforcement spans almost the entire length. And as strange as it sounds, uh, it's very good in cutting off the positions of the bars. For example, take a look at this. 
If you select, for example, this bar, you would see that the bar spans the entire length almost. We can see it from here. Assembly top is 14 meters, 0.35 centimeters, or I mean 14.35, because it was able to provide one full bar for the entire length of the beam. Well, regardless of this cool, amazing feature, if you run the analysis still, you still have a problem that it's unsatisfactory. So it's time to get uh, to continue with the reinforcement pattern and take a look on what else we are missing. So now we need to basically allow robot to like set free, like basically remove all restrictions on robot to try to design the beam. But before I do that, I want to quickly show you what it means to have bent up bottom bars and bent up top bars. Now the bent up bars is basically taking part of the bottom reinforcement and basically channeling it upwards and taking part of the top reinforcement and channeling it downwards. This helps in maybe in some regions where bent up bars is a thing. If you don't use them, but if you don't use bent up bars, and robot will use cut off bars as it's basically its uh, default reinforcement uh, uh, module. If you take a look now, using bent up bars, part of parts of the bottom and top reinforcement are interchanged and moved up and down to accommodate for different conditions of load. Also, bent up bars actually help in the resistance of shear in some ACI code uh, ACI code equations. Regardless of that, I don't want bent up bars, so let's remove bent up bars. Now I will give robot the, oh, the full control over the design. So first of all, I want to not let robot do and use any preferred spacing, but abide by the code where the minimum spacing is provided. And I will not let robot tie all bottom reinforcement, but tie only if necessary. This becomes especially, uh, the, yeah, this, I think I said this, but this becomes especially um, interesting in columns. Going on with this, let's take a look on the different aspects of bottom reinforcement, something I was always running around before. Now it's time to basically take a look at that. Now here you see n maximum equals two. This means that the maximum number of layers in the bottom reinforcement are two, and you can provide a table for when to use what. For example, if H is less than 300 millimeters, use one layer. If more, then use two layers and so on. Or for example, for the length. Now, I will let robot go full automatic and I want him to have the full six layers at his disposal because robot can reinforce up to six layers. So I will let robot decide himself. What about the diameters? Now you are providing, you are asking robot to provide diameters in the calculation options. But you can actually ask robot to provide two different diameters for the reinforcement. What I mean by this is that the first diameter is used for the farthest of uh, layers and the second diameter is used for all other layers. This might be interesting in some beams, but I will not be using this feature. What about N? N is the number of bars per layer. Now it's between 2 and 4. You can actually increase it if you have hidden beams and the beams are, for example, 1.1 meters wide. Then you might need more than 8 uh, bars in uh, the in the layer. I will go full 12 because it will allow robot to just go full on automatic. Now, if it works, then it does work. If it doesn't work and I still have errors, then I am faced with the decision of changing the cross section of the beam, the last decision I could take. So I'll go to, the, and by the way, this I'm saying last decision, but it's not always the case. Sometimes it's the first decision to change the cross section. I'll talk about the Im implications of changing cross sections in a moment. Going to top reinforcement, you can select as bottom reinforcement, but I will not do that. I will robot decide and go full on six uh, layers with diameters being chosen as he wants. He says he has bottom reinforcement, but no, I want a disc robot to basically design anything he wants and give him full authority over what it is going to deem necessary here. With that being said, to transfer the reinforcement, now I want my spacing multiplication to be to the closest five centimeters. If you want to fit to envelope, be my guest. If you don't, then just use constant spacing, meaning that each one meter is designed as its own thing. And if you continue, you have support reinforcement. This is basically, this controls the reinforcement at the support for masonry and for concrete support. And suspended loads is basically the way you are gonna carry the other beam if there is another beam and usually what happens is that there is an extra increase in stirrups or you can apply bent up bars here i will leave it in stirrup mode for the for the ties you can select different types of ties of course you can feel free to play around this this is nothing i want to add here but you can just play around it a good thing you can do is to select here and just you know save it as a certain configuration i don't want to do that so i'll continue if you go to shapes 
You see that there is a hooked shape used for the main reinforcement. Of course, there is different types of reinforcement with different types of shapes. You say here there is hooks if necessary. So if necessary, it will apply hooks. If it's not necessary, then it will be a straight bar. If you click OK now and run the analysis, hoping it works, maybe it will work, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. So let's take a look. Well, it doesn't. It seems that I'm still struggling with the safety factor of the environmental conditions, and I'm also struggling with the ULS bending. It seems that no matter what I do, it is unable to design in bending even after filling it to the brim with reinforcement. So it seems we are not onto anything here, which means that I would be forced to discard my beam. Even if you see here, you can see that. Wait, he warned me of something, right? Let me just check. The bending capacity span number one is not sufficient. Okay, where is it? Span, okay, this one. That's odd. That's really odd because, I mean, look, this is like a small break here. Why is this small break happening here? Let's take a look at other reinforcement. Sorry. This is strange. Why is there a small break here? Okay, it seems because this bar is being terminated here. I mean, this is easy to be solved. Like, why is robot struggling here? You can actually solve this by changing the length of the bar. Like, I mean, take a look. The only thing you need to do here is to increase basically the length of the bar to the left side. I mean, I, can, I could override this myself. Like, I could just accept the results and me, myself, change the length in my AutoCAD drawings. But it's kind of odd to see those things happening. Like, it's, it's really peculiar for me. I don't get it, to be honest. Um, yeah, well, I mean, robot is just struggling in this case. I don't know. Well, still, I'm, I will change the beam width because, or height, sorry. <laughs> because, take a look, the beam is filled with a lot of reinforcements here, and I kind of don't like it, to be honest. So I basically changed the, I mean, the, the section of the, of the beam. Now, why did I say that when you change the sections, you need to be careful? In my case here, I don't need to be careful. I can just select the section I want, for example, 400 by 700 and change everything. Uh, why did I choose the structures, structures window to change cross-section? I could, I could change the cross-section immediately here by going to the section here, to the beam section here, and change the cross-section. I could do that, but I don't want to do this because in my humble opinion, you should go to the start and change your cross-section here if you want to make a significant change to the cross-section. Why is that? In my case, to be honest, in this example, it doesn't really make a difference because you have a, I have a continuous beam on, on supports. So the stiffness of the beam doesn't really play a role in the moments on that beam. But if you are in a reinforced concrete 3D frame, then the stiffness of the beam affects how much moment it carries from the column and becomes an important factor to consider. So because of that, I am of the opinion that I should always change the cross sections when I want to finalize here and rerun the entire analysis just to be sure and then basically take this and go to design provide reinforcement. Now this will come with its own hassle and I will show this to you. So I'll just import my beam once again and it seems as if I need to do the entire beam again. And that's unfortunately the sad truth, which means that I need to very quickly do my entire things all over again. And this is once again a sad truth I have to abide by. Of course, the reason why I said because you might have a frame and changing the cross section of the beam will indeed change how much the beam would carry over from the moment from the column. In my case, it didn't make any difference, but I just explained this because in reality, your beam is part of a big structure. Now, going quickly back, I should have saved it as a config, but I'll just do it myself now. I'm selecting here uh, the, the things I selected before very quickly. Going to reinforcement, I'll go to whole beam, select 20 meters. By the way, this was, a play, this was just an idea. We can select back to 12, I don't care. I will unleash robot entirely and go to bottom reinforcement, allow it to go all the way to 6, unleash it. Go top reinforcement, unleash the number of layers. And for diameters, unleash it to have different diameters. Transverse reinforcement, I'll select my spacing to 0 0.05, things I've done before. And then for construction reinforcement, I'll leave it as is. Construction reinforcement is anything that is not basically helping in the load carrying capacity, but helps in uh, fulfilling code uh, requirements. For example, shrinkage reinforcement, which is called also skin reinforcement, 
burst and reinforcement when you have hooks with large reinforcement you could burst out so there is burst and reinforcement i'll just say okay for now and run the analysis hoping it this time it works and it does the shear capacity is insufficient that's odd that's really odd the shear capacity now is insufficient if you go to beam reinforcement that's really peculiar you go to beam diagrams the shear is just one millimeter less that's really really odd okay let me just see something it seems there's a small bug i need to take care of if you go to reinforcement pattern to transversal reinforcement is it because i asked him for five centimeters like is it because now orthodox robot is unable to put a stirrup closer to the column if this is the case then this is nuts this is a bug but okay fine let's just go on with it 0.01 again okay so i'm giving robot the full ability to yeah it's as as annoying as it is it is because it was unable to put a stirrup close to the column face that's outrageous but okay i guess that happened and uh, yeah i think we have solved our problems there is no errors neither in deflection nor in anywhere else so it's kind of cool now there is one last thing i wanted to warn about if you go to construction reinforcement in previous robots there wasn't a problem here let me just show you first of all i want whole beam construction reinforcement if you click on consider in load calculation then it will consider the assembly reinforcement in the load calculations and suddenly you have an error like everything was working perfectly look everything was working perfectly if you remove this consideration it was working perfectly and suddenly because everything was perfect and suddenly when you add to the reinforcement the construction reinforcement robot just breaks down and this is really peculiar why is that the reason why this is is because take a look there is a small problem with autodesk robots uh, systems here and it's a bug to be honest take a look on the moment diagram it seems that if you consider the assembly reinforcement it just drops down to zero in the top reinforcement uh, resistance now this is incorrect because look in span one it drops down to zero and span two drops down to zero and that's the reason why i had an error and in span three it drops down to zero and the reason why it drops down to zero is strange there is reinforcement it exists but it is being spliced here and it seems that whenever he splices reinforcement he just ignores them in the load analysis calc or the load calculation that's not really correct because i mean we splice for proper load transfer so they, sh they should be included now the error that robot has is that it first of all includes it in the moment resistance calculations so it realizes no need for those big bars and then in the second iteration when it checks its design it realizes or it miscalculates and thinks that those things do not have anything to do with load carrying resistance and drops the resistance back to zero in which case of course you have the error here now you could as a human being just ignore the error or you can be like me and just select or ask the top reinforcement to be continuous all over the span which makes more sense to be honest and just select here that the construction reinforcement not be included in the calculations and you click now okay and you can see the top reinforcement is extending all the way and the error disappeared also there is no negative resistance here because the construction reinforcement is not taken into consideration in the analysis of that thing so if you go to beam reinforcement you can see perfectly fine beam reinforcement everything seems to be fine beam node is as clear as heaven so i think we are good the last thing i want to talk about is drawings if you click on that you see the drawing of each span by itself but i want more like i want to really dive deep into it for example you have some you have some modification elements here if you start the drawing components and select the drawing component, you can actually change that stuff. For example, here you can move those uh, elements if you want in the drawing. You can move the, 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 the dimension lines. And you also, and this is really cool, you can right-click here and basically select the section location. And you can see that the section AA is taken at 0.91 from the left support. You can actually move it a little bit farther away and hit OK. And it will actually do that. It moved it farther away. Also, also, you can right click here and change the scale of that. If you go to scale, for example, and select, um, for example, I want to have user scales and I want to select one to 100, you can see, of course, a slight scale being reflected here. This is really, really cool. And a great thing about Odus Robot, its ability to, I mean, you can change here the bars, you can move them, you can, I think I messed it up, but I mean, you get the idea. 
Also, for example, you can draw a line here, an arbitrary line. I don't know why you would draw a line, but I mean, it's pretty cool. And you can even draw a dimension line, I guess, or something. It's kind of cool. You should take a look at it. So I think that is, that is everything I wanted to talk about in the details of the reinforced concrete. You can, of course, go to file and save drawing in different format and save it as a DXF file and then open it in AutoCAD. So yeah. I think that that is I think that this is everything I wanted to talk about. I hope they enjoyed the, that you enjoyed the video. Of course, if you have enjoyed the video, then why not subscribe, share, comment and like, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video.